my friends, before we carry on with this video, I know you're already on YouTube. I know you're already watching videos. I want to steer you in the direction of your next video that you're going to watch after you watch this one. Our friends over at SNS Diesel Motorsport have been putting out some awesome videos. They just dropped a couple new videos I know you're going to love. So make sure you guys check their videos out. We'll link some of them up here. We'll link them down in the description. But go check them out. But anyway, let's carry on with the video on the new race trailer. What is going on my friends? Welcome back to another video. Just when you thought that there couldn't be any more epic videos left after picking up the Peterbilt, after getting the step deck, but here we are back again with another epic video because we are going to pick up the new race trailer. Because we got no air horns, otherwise I'd be hitting the air horns. But we're going to pick up the uh, new race trailer from Vintage up here in, I believe it's right around Elkhart, Indiana. Huge shout out to LB Trailers, Lance from LB Trailers, if you guys need a trailer. Got us hooked up with this bad unit. Uh, it's been a long time in the making, planning this thing out, drawing it out. It's completely custom. It's bad to the bone. And this is basically the first time that I'm going to, I've seen pictures of it, but it's the first time seeing it in person completed you guys know we were up here uh kind of going over the layout we saw the skeleton of it and it is now completely done ready to be picked up i believe we gotta like give some placement of a couple different lights that uh they wanted the truck to hook up to but hooked up four uh but we're at the peterbilt we got we got uh afro ninja in the back taking a nap we all pretty much haven't slept per usual because we were just grinding so hard the night before that nobody slept and you know that's just that's uh, what we do we uh, we make treks with no sleep and here we are i don't think that was the right road hoffman oh yeah there oh hey there's our there was our turn there's our turn anyway we're gonna get to vintage here in one piece hopefully and uh we're gonna take a look at the new trailer and bring it home oh there it is there it is How she look? <laughs> It's just wild. It's just wild. <laughs> Huge. Yo. Huge. I remember when me and Allie had to put the top on the Peterbilt by ourselves. Like it's come a long way. I don't think uh I don't think half zoom on rollers is gonna be enough. <laughs> You're gonna like have to be lanes away. <laughs> Seven lanes away, half zoom, no traffic.
well, we have made it back home as you can see, and we have got the new race trailer in the driveway. I know, for most of you guys have watched, you think it would be unbelievable that this behemoth fit in the driveway, but I guarantee you it did. It actually wasn't that bad. But anyway, we're back home. I was honestly so overwhelmed by the sheer size of this thing when we went to go pick it up that I honestly just didn't really do much talking. I was, I'm, I still am speechless, but I wanna go over the new race trailer top to bottom, kind of explain the reasoning behind it. You guys know our old 48 foot race trailer had served us well for many, many years. We're making this shift, we're making this change, uh, the way that we are doing events and traveling and what we're bringing and all that. So we're gonna go over all of that. Uh, so just, crazy crazy excited about this new race trailer before we get into it obviously guys if you haven't seen our latest giveaway truck if you haven't gotten in it i'm not sure what you're waiting for 20 times entries are back for the rest of the entire giveaway we are down to less than two weeks left this whole setup going to one of you guys truck trailer wow it's getting echoey 10 grand in cash six speed cummins one of the last 2018 G56 trucks is trucks out there available. But anyway, make sure you guys go get entered. Wrenchworks.com. Every dollar that you spend gets you entered. I know you need a new t-shirt. I know you need a new hat. We got sweatshirts. Website has been getting restocked. So if you've been waiting around, now is the time. Go get entered. But anyway, let's jump into the new race trail. I have to, I, I am currently having to back up to get this whole thing in the shot. But I want to go over all the details. Like I said, me and Michael spend quite a bit of time designing this thing. Every switch, every light, every layout uh, piece and part of this we put in here on purpose. So brand new 53 foot max height vintage race trailer. Of course, you guys know that we had to go all black and trust me, it matches the Peterbilt so, so well. We're gonna be keeping, we're gonna be keeping the polish, the chrome uh, look that matches the Peterbilt. I really like it, it really, really stands out. But let's go over this. I guess we're just gonna walk around this thing so I can show you guys. So it is a extremely tall trailer. Uh, I believe 13.6 is kind of like max height. That's what we put it at. There's no AC units on the top. Uh, it's all in the front so let's walk around this thing get it get an overall idea so uh we have a winch that controls the back door that comes up and down now uh it's not really super uh man lift friendly obviously we put lots of lights in the back we've got lights that light up when you put the truck in reverse down below and one of those light bars actually acts as a reverse light as well and then one is also a loading light so you can manually switch on both of those lights but it is designed for a reverse light option Option when you're backing up this long thing and really the whole idea behind the new race trailer obviously we've got more people here now the old race trailer was me Allie little baby Reagan and now we've got uh, families we've got me we've got Michael we've got Michael's family we've got uh, Cole which is around a lot and then obviously Dawson so we've got multiple people we've got you, you got to make people feel comfortable while we're doing this stuff and racing uh, because there's nothing worse than like being out on the road and like not having enough space so really the new race trailer in conjunction with the toy hauler was always Always the plan as far as the best mix between uh, living and racing and having enough space for everybody to kind of have their own space so this still has living quarters in the front it still has a bathroom but anyway moving down the side we have got a DMP awning system that we're gonna be installing those are the brackets that are top and bottom thankfully they are awesome enough and they're gonna be making the whole entire tent awning uh, structure in black that kind of matches which is really cool and you can see we've got power outlets and lights and speakers down almost every single station where that awning system is going to be set up. Me and Michael uh, are going to pit next to each other. If you guys can tell when we go racing, we rely pretty heavily on each other uh, for pit support, for helping work on stuff. Um, it's just way easier to be uh, with each other and next to each other because we don't have a crew of three guys with me and three guys with Michael we're trying to film back and forth so uh this entire setup is geared towards me and michael both being able to race and both being able to pit next to each other and take up not any more space than we are technically really allowed for two pro race teams two uh pro race team gets a spot to park and then a spot to pit next to each other so if you times that by two technically we got four spots so we're able to kind of pit next to each other and then kind of put the toy hauler on the other side and we are not taking up any more space than we normally have i try 
try to be respectful, obviously, about that. We're not trying to take up uh, a whole football field, even though it kind of looks like it. Really, we're trying to stay in that footprint. So anyway, we got lights. We have got some speakers. We've got some Sony Marine speakers on here. We've got outlets all along the bottom here and then we've put outlets up high that way when we have lights in the awning system we can just plug them in and you don't see cords that are dropping down nothing is like really a trip hazard we've also got air hookups one right here there's one in the middle and i think there's one up front that way you can run airlines and you're not stringing airlines across your entire pit we've tried to really we've tried to really think this thing through in all different types of scenarios and even scenarios where uh, say Michael's not racing, but we want to try and bring two vehicles or one vehicle or we've got a special event where we're only bringing one uh, We've we've kind of geared this to do, do it all do it all so uh, that's kind of a brief rundown on the side some of the fasteners that you see up there we're going to go ahead and kind of like paint but that is actually where the lifts are bolted in the inside of the trailer and again if you guys go back and watch the beginning kind of structural video of this you'll see all of those big metal supports uh, that are strategically placed where the lifts are are in the trailer so uh, went with Single triple axles. We did not go duels. We did not do a true fixed height stacker trailer. Uh, and that is for a very specific reason. Obviously, we are limited as far as like how heavy duty this trailer is because of uh, the single triples. But we upgraded them as much as we could with keeping the inside width of in between the axles as good as we can. I did not want huge ramps over wheel wells, so tandem duels, you really lose a lot of flexibility when it comes to these trucks because they're so tall, we need to use the bottom of it. Um, and we'll get into that when you see the inside. So just kind of keep that in mind of like why we went with the uh, single triples, I call them, just to make it easy. So really inside width and versatility of what we're driving inside of there uh, is key. So pretty much a rundown on this side, double doors, we got the step. Uh, up here we've got another uh, air outlet. We've got a water spigot to wash hands. We've got our water tank hookups, again, kind of another outlet. And we've got our last row, so the on will actually kind of like stop pretty much right here and you've got your access window up there because that's where the living quarters is again it's really honestly a very big version of my 48 foot um, we'll link that video up here you guys can go check out the old 48 foot in case this in case this thing is too big it's not really relatable you can see how I kind of laid out my 48 foot because we did the same thing uh, kind of spec that out and this is like the second trailer that I've been able to spec out uh, enclosed wise so up here we have got this big cabinet, which I was like unsure of if it was gonna be too big and whatnot, but obviously you can tell we've got more than adequate space with the bunk and the frame of the truck and who knows maybe we're, we're gonna we're gonna extend this out a little bit so it looks even cooler but uh inside here is basically i would almost call it a i think it's called a bard unit uh but it's a commercial refrigeration system that's up top there which will open that up but this compartment down here is really really awesome i'm really pumped about this because we are able to kind of put our um compressor our air compressor right here if people are staying or you want to put luggage uh, a lot of times putting luggage like hiking it all the way up in there whatever uh, this is a really really big compartment for a lot of stuff to go inside of we've got power in here um, and we'll get to the when we get to the other side I'll explain something else that I've got planned into this thing which is really cool we've got lights over here that you can turn on and you've also got a loading light which is kind of what they mounted there while we were there so you guys can see once you're hooking up you can kind of flip those on before you go ahead and slide underneath your uh, your fifth wheel plate there but let's go ahead I'll hop up I'll hop up in there and show you guys that you can kind of see right here oh look at that bard so there's your AC and heat a little bit more of a commercial style and if I can peek my head up in here again there's actually even more storage on either side of of this unit which is which is so cool it's just nice to have space because when you got oh wow that's a that's a that is a hinge on that bad boy holy smokes you just never know how much stuff you are going to bring and let me tell you what it gets packed it gets packed really 
really easily uh, and it, it there's just, you just don't even you don't even know how much space so uh, the cool thing and one thing that I've got planned into this not so much the way it was specced out but obviously you've got the diesel tank right here of the truck you've got a compartment here and then you've got our diesel fuel right here because this bad boy has got a 10k diesel generator in it which is nice because uh, everything on the trailer is diesel related so this does have a pretty good size tank in it, but just in case we are gone for a, uh, a quite a while, uh, my plan was to kind of get like an air dog pump mounted up in this front compartment and have lines that can go from the truck tank and then into the fill of the trailer. So we've got extra, we've got extra fuel because this thing doesn't burn a ton of fuel going down the road. We're usually pretty good on fuel. It's got more than enough fuel to kind of like transfer into the trailer in case we have extended stays. So uh, another thing, I put another air outlet down here. You've got your dumps down here, generator fill and then down here, which is very similar to what we did on my old 48 foot is we have got man doors that are strategically placed for when we've got say the 05 in here and it's down on the one lift so you can still open that up and you can actually open up a vehicle car or truck door completely open to get out you don't have to actually crawl out if you're on this back lift which uh doesn't seem like that big of a deal but it is extremely nice we used that a ton on my old trailer so we made sure we measured that out with this trailer and put that in the appropriate spot so there you have it there's both outsides you've got this big compartment got that side you've got the peterbilt looking just absolutely like a whole entire unit see if we can do this while we're videoing there we go and don't 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 forget i mean we pretty much have to learn how to use this thing because we got it in the driveway and it has been sitting and as far as the ins and outs and everything uh as far as just getting it to to be usable we still have not completely figured all that stuff out there's toolboxes to go in here uh tons of stuff so take that for what it's worth i'm still we're still still learning everything okay well there you have it so we've got this big big heavy duty ramp right here that's attached on the back as you can see we've got our winch cable we've got our little literally it says come up come up winch come on up terry come up winch so we've got our come up winch up there well, I guess we might as well start in the back here. Basically, I wanted to be able to switch different lights on and off from the back. That was one thing on my old trailer that uh, you did not have access with the front lights like you did the back. And so we tried to like double up on switches to make sure that everything was kind of like coherent if you were in the back of the trailer, in the front of the trailer, all that stuff. So you've got switches for that you've got oh there we go there's the loading lights so i put because we do load up and we do have night events i wanted to make sure if you're loading something that you didn't have basically how many people have helped somebody load and you've got a flashlight or you've got your phone light you don't want your headlights on but you don't want a light flash and you can't see so these loading lights really actually cut down on all of that which are really really nice but as you can see maybe not there's e-track from the back all the way to the front and we've got two lifts in here. We've got a big 16 foot lift and then we've got a 10 foot lift in front of it. The 16 foot lift actually has a removable center so that way you can actually work on something inside here. Wow, there's no light right there. So you can actually pull stuff in here, lift it up and work on it. And the general layout for me and Michael both is we measured the rail. The rail can actually go on the bottom and take up most of the entire bottom because it's so long. And I can lift my Pro Street truck up or another truck up just high enough to get his rail underneath. Now again, his rail is only, I would say two and a, I'll say three feet. Let's just call it round at three feet. So this, this back lift here really only needs to come up to about maybe right here or right here. And then there's enough space back here for his wing. Uh, the wing 
or Wang, I should say. The Wang was the big thing because trying to fit that in conjunction, we didn't really want to have to take the wing on and off. Like it just becomes a whole deal, right? So this space back here, and we kind of scooted this front lift up enough to kind of make sense with the wheel well openings. Again, a lot of measuring, a lot of, a lot of thought went into this uh, to try and make everybody one big happy family and get everything so we cut down on 75 trucks having to get towed there uh so we're just trying to kind of make it as streamlined streamlined as possible so yeah now i will say we haven't tried it out we haven't tested it out so that should make for a very interesting video because if something doesn't fit that's kind of a it's kind of a big deal but i have i have complete faith in our measuring so 6,000 pound lift here, removable center. As you can see, it comes up all the way to up here. And then we have got, I believe this is a 10 or a 12 foot lift, a completely solid one. And what we can do here is we can lift up the smart car or lift up toolboxes, either one. We haven't really played with it, but there is enough space on this front lift to lift up the smart car or lift up say toolboxes, other material, um, just, all kinds of stuff that we bring we can lift that up high enough and then still have this bottom floor space for the other one whether that is toolboxes the smart car everything else we need to bring but that can go up so these can move independently of each other and give us basically the maximum space that's kind of how we have it laid out and it sh we should have more than enough space with 53 feet of all this stuff. So anyway, you can see we've actually got a really big loft area that we can put tons of stuff up in there. Um, and then it's kind of walled off where the living quarters is. And you've got AC that comes back here, but a very, very strong structural loft area up top there. So moving on, all of the hydraulic pumps for the lifts we put in the floor. That way when the lifts are completely up, uh, it is a completely smooth bottom. Got a winch up there that goes all the way to the back. And again, if we're hauling, say, just pickup trucks, no dragster, I don't know, but we should be able to fit maybe like the shorty and the 05 or two regular cabs. Again, we didn't really measure for that. We were really more worried about the race vehicles specifically. So that's kind of where we're at with that. We've got outlets galore in this thing. We've got our on off for the generator there. We've got tie downs in the floor right here. We've got wireless remotes for the lifts as well to make it easy to kind of like be driving or someone be looking and like being able to like lift up the lifts and kind of walk around while the things are getting lifted up, which is really, really nice. Again, we got roof access up there because we are gonna have to put a awning structure on. So we got a full walk on uh, rooftop. We've got outlets up there. We've got lights up there moving down to here. And one thing that I learned on my other trailer is I put carpet extra high up here because normally it only comes down to say here. And when you've got toolboxes and roll carts uh, involved, it is much nicer to have carpet up higher. That way you're not scratching into uh, whatever wall color that you have. Obviously we went with all black, murdered out ceilings, murdered out uh, walls. It's just super cool. Obviously the walls and the roof and everything are insulated in the trailer to kind of help with combating the heat, but we've got a serious, we've got a serious heat and AC unit out there. So I have no fear. We've got an outlet up here cause we're probably talking about maybe putting a TV up here to kind of like display data when you're looking at it from passes. Again, we're just, we're just, we're just trying to be official boys. Uh, fridge, cabinets, Radio, we've actually got an amplifier on this bad boy because I was like, you know what? We can't we can't be lacking on the stereo system because the Peterbilt just got done. That's where the fill comes through for the fuel tank. Boys, we are I'm rattling this off. I'm I'm not trying to rush. Boy, it is it is it's getting hot in here, man. It's definitely getting hot. But a little workstation, pretty similar to our previous trailer except i got an air hook up there we've got some extra lights we've got extra power here because my, our old trailer there was only one outlet here and this definitely becomes a collect all for battery chargers computers uh, you know if you guys have been to a race you normally you walk in here and there's a huddle right here looking at computers data and, la and laptops and all that stuff so a bigger bathroom than what we were used to on our old trailer, which is extremely nice because it was so cramped in the last bathroom. So again, not massively bigger, but definitely quite a bit bigger. Shower, sink, 
you know the deal up here the living space again we're not talking full living quarters but it is definitely much bigger than the previous one because you can stand up because the trailer is so tall got an outlet here for a tv we can put two single single beds in here whatever we have to to do uh but again dawson and cole will probably stay in here keep those shenanigans away from uh anyone else cabinets up here <laughs> That sounded that sounded bad. It's not like uh, I don't know. I, anyway, we're gonna let that one go. Got our windows here, and then of course you gotta watch your head just a little bit. I tried to split the height that way you could stand with more than enough space. Even if uh, Cletus McFarland himself were to come in here, he is not going to hit his head on our loft area. So. Uh, Garrett, you can come in here anytime you want, uh, but our loft area is still big enough. I want to say that that is almost four feet, three and a half feet tall. I can't exactly remember, but we put this height so you didn't even have to worry about coming in here and bumping your head. Now, one cool thing that I will say that I put in this trailer to match the Peterbilt, it's coming. There it is. You probably can't see because of all the light in here, but we have got little amber bullet lights in the entire trailer up top we've got them down below that switches off we've got them up there we've got them in the bathroom so it is just a really cool vibe with all of the amber lights in here got our lights on the outside right there guys that is pretty much almost a full tour of everything i'm sure that i am forgetting tons of stuff We've got adequate space between the back of the truck and the trailer. We have got even more room up here, but that houses all of the hydraulics for the dual landing gear, uh, all of that stuff. So you can kind of key and switch all that stuff on and level it out. It actually worked out really, really well because, because we knew uh, what the truck was fifth wheel height, we were able to give that measurement to them and make sure that with the truck hooked up, it actually is sitting really 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 level i went ahead and measured the entire bottom of it and it is at the same height even hooked up uh just in case you want to stop and not unhook it and re-level it it's actually sitting very very level which is really really cool one other cool thing that i really really enjoyed about doing this entire process at vintage specifically uh because todd uh actively does and was racing dragsters and is is kind of like uh part of that whole racing family uh it's really cool because there's little intricate little ins and outs and especially with Lance's help as well We've got this thing specked out uh, Really for the racer in mind and I kind of noticed that and I'm bringing that up because right here We've actually got controls to where we can actually lift the front jacks of the trailer to better our load angle right here as well So again, just kind of like huge shout out to Todd and Lance for uh, Getting this thing specked out with me kind of showing me the ins and outs when you get into something this big do's don'ts this thing is built to the nines and guys, I am so pumped to finally have it and to start using it and having uh, all the racing that we do just kind of go to the next level with being able to bring more stuff, being more prepared. And really one of the big things uh, that I wanted to accomplish was right now, and especially with our old trailer and some of the stuff that we've been doing in between is we race, we unload, we come home, we pack for the next one uh, we don't have spare everything built into the trailers and now that we have this behemoth of a warehouse of a trailer we can now have spare everything leave it inside the trailer and when it's time to go race we load the cars up everything else is in here it's left in here same with the toy hauler we're not bringing stuff in and out because it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like a lot but it does consume a lot of time packing getting ready um and this should help solve a lot of that and i'm super super uh pumped and thankful that we can do that and like i mentioned i'm just so 
over the moon excited to start using this thing. Well, that is pretty much gonna wrap up our overview tour as it is starting to rain, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the overview on the new race trailer. Let me know what you guys think. Again, same as the step deck. Let me know if there's some things that we cannot live without. Uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of videos of kind of setting up the trailer and getting vehicles stashed in here and kind of getting acclimated to the new trailer itself. But leave a comment down below. Appreciate it, guys. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you guys head over to wrenchworks.com, get entered to win our latest giveaway truck and trailer. Again, truck, trailer, 10 grand in cash, going to one of you guys, 45,000 miles, six speed Laramie truck. I'm telling you, it doesn't get much nicer than that, but appreciate you guys as always. Uh, huge, huge, huge thank you to all of you guys who have supported over the many, many years that we have been making videos. Uh, it all, again, would not be possible without you guys, without you guys watching the videos, without you guys liking the videos, uh, without all of the support. So again, huge, huge thank you to you guys for continuing to carry on the journey. We're not stopping anytime soon. So again, just greatly, greatly appreciate that. And that's a wrap on this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.